Horrid Henry's Haunted House. <coughs> no way! shrieked Horrid Henry. He was not staying the weekend with his slimy cousin stuck up Steve, and that was that. He sat in the back seat of the car with his arms folded. Yes, you are, said Mum. Steve can't wait to see you, said Dad. This was not exactly true. After Henry had sprayed Steve with green goo last Christmas and helped himself to a few of Steve's presents, Steve had sworn revenge. Under the circumstances, Henry thought it would be a good idea to keep out of Steve's way. And now Mum had arranged for him to spend the weekend while she and Dad went off on their own. Perfect Peter was staying with Tidy Ted, and he was stuck with Steve. It's a great chance for you boys to become good friends, she said. Steve is a very nice boy. I feel sick, said Henry, coughing. Stop faking, said Mum. You were well enough to play football all morning. I'm too tired, said Henry, yawning. I'm sure you'll get plenty of rest at Aunt Ruby's, said Dad firmly. I'm not going, howled Henry. Mum and Dad took Henry by the arms, dragged him to rich Aunt Ruby's door and rang the bell. The massive door opened immediately. Welcome, Henry, said rich Aunt Ruby, giving him a great smacking kiss. Henry, how lovely to see you, said stuck-up Steve sweetly. That's a very nice second-hand jumper you're wearing. Ah, Steve, said rich Aunt Ruby. I think Henry looks very smart. Henry glared at Steve. Thank goodness he'd remembered his goo shooter. He had a feeling he might need it. Goodbye, Henry, said Mum. Be good. Ruby, thank you so much for having him. A pleasure, lied Aunt Ruby. The great door closed. Henry was alone in the house with his arch enemy. Henry looked grimly at Steve. What a horrible boy, he thought. Steve looked grimly at Henry. What a horrible boy, he thought. Why don't you both go upstairs and play in Steve's room until supper's ready, said Aunt Ruby. I'll show Henry where he's sleeping first, said Steve. Good idea, said Aunt Ruby. <coughs> Reluctantly, Henry followed his cousin up the wide staircase. I bet you're scared of the dark, said Steve. Course I'm not, said Henry. That's good, said Steve. This is my room, he added, opening the door to an enormous bedroom. Horrid Henry stared longingly at the shelves, filled to bursting with zillions of toys and games. Of course, all my toys are brand new. Don't you dare touch anything, hissed Steve. They're all mine, and only I can play with them. Henry scowled. When he was king, he'd use Steve's head for target practice. They continued all the way to the top. Goodness, this old house was big, thought Henry. Steve opened the door to a large attic bedroom with brand new pink and blue flowered wallpaper, a four-poster bed, an enormous polished wood wardrobe, and two large windows. You're in the haunted room, said Steve casually. Great! Said Henry. I love ghosts. It would take more than a silly ghost to frighten him. Don't believe me if you don't want to, said Steve. Just don't blame me when the ghost starts wailing. You're nothing but a big fat liar, said Henry. He was sure Steve was lying. He was absolutely sure Steve was lying. He was one million percent sure that Steve was lying. He's just trying to pay me back for Christmas, thought Henry. Steve shrugged. Suit yourself. See that stain on the carpet? 
Henry looked down at something brownish. That's where the ghost vaporized, whispered Steve. Of course, if you're too scared to sleep here. Henry would rather have walked on hot coals than admit being scared to Steve. He yawned, as if he'd never heard anything so boring. Well, I'm looking forward to meeting the ghost, said Henry. Good, said Steve. Supper, boys, called Aunt Ruby. <laughs> Henry lay in bed. Somehow he'd survived the dreadful meal and stuck up Steve's bragging about his expensive clothes, toys and trainers. Now here he was, alone in the attic at the top of the house. He jumped into bed, carefully avoiding the faded brown patch on the floor. He was sure it was just spilled cola or something. But just in case, Henry looked round him. The only thing he didn't like was the huge wardrobe opposite the bed. It loomed up in the darkness at him. You could hide a body in that wardrobe, thought Henry. And rather wished he hadn't. Henry stiffened. Had he just imagined the sound of someone moaning? Nothing, thought Henry, snuggling down under the covers. Just the wind. This time the moaning was a fraction louder. The hairs on Henry's neck stood up. He gripped the sheets tightly. Henry sat up. The ghostly, breathy moaning sound was not coming from outside. It appeared to be coming from inside the giant wardrobe. Quickly, Henry switched on the bedside light. What am I going to do? thought Henry. He wanted to run screaming to his aunt. But the truth was, Henry was too frightened to move. Some dreadful moaning thing was inside the wardrobe, just waiting to get him. And then, hurried Henry, remembered who he was. Leader of a pirate gang. Afraid of nothing except injections. I'll just get up and check inside that wardrobe, he thought. Am I a man or a mouse? Mouse, he thought. He did not move. <laughs> Moaned the thing. The unearthly noises were getting louder. Shall I wait here for it to get me or shall I make a move first, thought Henry. Silent. He reached under the bed for his boo shooter. Then slowly, he swung his feet over the bed. Tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. Holding his breath, horrid Henry stood outside the wardrobe. <laughs> Henry jumped, then he flung open the door and fired. The wardrobe was empty, except for something small and greeny black on the top shelf. It looked like... it was! Henry reached up and took it. It was a cassette player, covered in green goo. Inside was a tape. It was called Dr. Jekyll's Spooky Sounds. Steve, thought horrid Henry grimly. Revenge! <laughs> Did you sleep well, dear? asked Aunt Ruby at breakfast. Oh, like a log, said Henry. No strange noises, asked Steve. No, smiled Henry sweetly. Why? Did you hear something? Steve looked disappointed. Horrid Henry kept his face blank. He couldn't wait for the evening. <laughs> Horrid Henry spent a busy day. He went ice skating. He went to the cinema. He played football. 
After supper, Henry went straight to bed. It's been a lovely day, he said, but I'm tired. Oh, good night, Aunt Ruby. Good night, Steve. Good night, Henry, said Ruby. Steve ignored him. But Henry did not go to his bedroom. Instead, he sneaked into Steve's. He wriggled under Steve's bed and lay there waiting. Soon, Steve came into the room. Henry resisted the urge to reach out and seize Steve's skinny leg. He had something much scarier in mind. He heard Steve putting on his blue bunny pyjamas and jumping into bed. Henry waited until the room was dark. Steve lay above him, humming to himself. Jumpy, 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 choo, sang Steve. Slowly, Henry reached up and ever so slightly poked the mattress. Silence. <laughs> sang Steve a little more quietly. Henry reached up and poked the mattress again. Steve sat up. Then he lay back. Henry poked the mattress again, ever so slightly. Must be my imagination, muttered Steve. Henry allowed several moments to pass. Then he twitched the duvet. Mummy, whimpered Steve. Jab! Henry gave the mattress a definite poke. Ah! Screamed Steve. He leaped up and ran out of the room. Mummy, help! Monsters! Henry scrambled out of the room and ran silently up to his attic. Quick as he could, he put on his pyjamas, then clattered noisily back down the stairs to Steve's. Aunt Ruby was on her hands and knees, peering under the bed. Steve was shivering and quivering in the corner. There's nothing here, Steve, she said firmly. What's wrong? asked Henry. Nothing muttered Steve. You're not scared of the dark, are you? said Henry. Back to bed, boys, said Aunt Ruby. She left the room. Ah, oh, mummy, help, monsters, mimicked Henry, sticking out his tongue. Mum, wailed Steve, Henry's being horrid. Go to bed, both of you, shrieked Ruby. Watch out for monsters, said Henry. Steve did not move from his corner. Want to swap rooms tonight, said Henry. Steve did not wait to be asked twice. Oh, yes, said Steve. Go on up, said Henry. Sweet dreams. Steve dashed out of his bedroom as fast as he could. Dee, <laughs> thought hurried Henry, pulling Steve's toys down from the shelves. Now, what would he play with first? Oh, yes. He'd left a few spooky sounds of his own under the attic bed, just in case.